behind, but let me give your thumbs up if you can hear me, okay? Yes, thank you, Maggie. So we have in the room Daniel, Ursula, Megan, a community member. Do you mind introducing yourself? Join me, yes. With us, and Lindy's here too. And on the screen, we have Maggie, we have Suzanne, and then Natasha, and Jonas. And Michael Swing and Alan Gilbert and ooh, Matt. Matt. Yeah, Matt George. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't see other faces. So, but we're gonna, we're gonna get started. I, I wanted to ask a for opinion. I fear we would open it for for questions and not necessarily have to go through the entire presentation today. The presentation was. On the in in our in our website, but if people here or online want to want us to go through the entire presentation, happy to go over that. I'm wondering if everybody received their postcard and has uh, has picked up a report. What is the pleasure of the board? With? It's the same presentation we've done. Right? Yeah, it's the same presentation yeah. we've done. So right. I figure we just we're here to answer questions and I'm gonna stop sharing. Well, I'm just asking the board members what do you guys want to do? Just show. Um, I think that's up to the to the non-board members, right? If yeah. anyone wants to see the presentation, if anyone wants the information, by all means let's roll it out and, and, and do the whole thing. Um, but if not, if everyone feels like They've been informed by that deck already, then we can get into answering some questions and have some dialogue. Yeah. I agree. I, yeah, I, I agree with that. I would yes. like to spend most of our time in dialogue if that's what people would like. Yeah. With some of the non board members, Alan or the Naylor, I see you. Do you guys have specific questions that you would like to answer or do you want us to go through the presentation? Go ahead, uh, Mr. Canela. So, uh, um, can I, I, oh, go ahead. Hold on a minute, Alan, let's let Mr. Canela okay. go first. Oh. Yeah, that's what I said, go, go ahead, Mr. Canela. Oh. Alan, yeah, with, with other okay. Members. Um, my, uh, my question isn't so much about the presentation. It's, um, a little persnickety about, um, how this meeting was rolled out. And I just, I feel like, I, I don't understand why some places I see it's an informational meeting and then other places I see it's an annual meeting. And I know, um, I believe by the bylaws, we have to have an annual meeting. And I assumed that this was an annual meeting. But I just think that for yeah, yeah, the sake exactly. of the sake of continuity and community awareness and connectedness, um, that the language really needs to be the same, um, because people might not have realized that this was the annual meeting and thinking that tomorrow on the ballot it says annual meeting on top of the ballot. So it's, I mean, the town is having an annual meeting. And they are having a ballot, but they're also having a, an annual meeting. I just I feel like for improved community engagement, if that's the goal, which we're you know hiring someone to engage the community, these kind of things really need to, you know, be put together a little bit better. So thank you. Thanks. Hey, Alan, you're muted, Alan. Laura, you sound like you're in an echo chamber, and I don't know if other people are having trouble hearing you, but it's a little bit difficult, and I'm not sure. It could be me, but I, I heard the previous person just fine, so I'm not oh. sure what's up. Alan, it's because she's in a big room at U32, and there's a lot of echo in the room. Previous okay. speaker is you know, speaking online at home, just as I am, right? So okay. we're trying to do the, the best we can with you know these mixed kind of meetings. Right. The audio is the audio isn't great, right? The U32 room wasn't set up as a as a as a studio. Right. 
Well, when you live in Worcester, you always wonder if you uh, have any connection at all. So I was happy that I am connected, but I just wanted to make sure I was getting the best connection I could. So I I did have a question. I I think the big the big message that I took from from the report is that um, our per pupil spending is has really gone through the roof, and it's because that we're losing it's because of we're we're losing kids. Um, and that's not anything new in terms of we're losing kids. It's been a long-term trend, but it looks like the curve down has gotten steeper and steeper. To have to have per pupil spending go up almost 13% in one year, I, I can't recall a similar year like this where that's happened. And the really, the really concerning thing to me, and I'm I'm guessing other people as well, is uh, as myself, is it looks like this trend of uh, downward student numbers is going to continue. The projections you have in the report show that we're going to be going down at a pretty steep rate. So I'm wondering what kind of what kind of thinking you've been doing about what happens next year uh, and the years after that. Do you see us at a really critical point where we have to do something? quite different starting next year uh, if we don't get a lot more students moving in all of a sudden? Because I, I don't think that a 13% increase in tax rates every year is, is sustainable. I mean, people are, people are gonna, are, people are going to be, are going to notice this and um, they're going to be hit by it when they get their tax bills. And I just wonder what kind of, what what kind of thinking you've been doing if when someone asks you what's going to happen in the next four years if we continue in the same direction? Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to attempt to start the conversation, and then board members can. Yeah. Uh, and, and Megan is also with us uh, today. You know, and like I was saying in my letter in the report, you know, there's no question this is a hard budgeting year, right? We have we are facing a number of things and especially our declining enrollment is a, is a big one. But to answer specifically your question, we are involved in a visioning and strategic planning. Hopefully you can hear me. Okay. Can you hear me okay? okay. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult, but keep going. What to do to make that better? Because I'm like, <laughs> if I went closer to the screen, yeah, if I move the owl, I can move the table closer. Oh, maybe, yeah, it might have the team. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah it's all okay. taping. We can move okay. But so we are, we are involved in a visioning and strategic planning. And through that process, we are going to try our best as a board and as and our administrators to bring new, what I call, oxygen into the system. So how can we be creative and better serve our kids with the resources that we have and not, you know, hopefully next year, it's going to be a really hard year again for budgeting, but hopefully we can do some efficiencies to try to adjust to our decline in enrollment and not make it more expensive for our tax for our taxpayers. So still serve all the needs of our kids with as best as we can with the resources we have. And through that community engagement, we will be better be able to uh, address uh, whatever whatever creative, I don't want to say this is what the solution is going to be. We presented a couple of different options uh, through our budget, whether it is for some of our sixth graders to be together, whether it is some of our preschoolers to be together. If what that is, we don't know yet, but we're definitely in have our creative thing you know, hats on right now, and that's what we were going to be spending most of our time, and that's part of the reason we want to engage in this strategic planning and community engagement, because it's not just the board sitting here, the community needs to be involved in order to that, it, to feel, you know, meaningful, and that it responds to the needs of our community and the kids. That's so it, yes. If I could just have a follow-up question, is there one thing or several things this year that were different in terms of higher expenditure levels? And one of the one of the things I've been thinking about is I know the state has tried to put more and more of the expense of the pension system onto the local districts. That was it used to be that that well that has been a state program forever. And starting about five years ago, the legislature started putting small amounts and then 
they started growing bigger. Are, do you know how much the local district now is putting into the pension system that it wasn't uh, five years ago? I don't have that number at the top of my head. Is Suzanne or Megan? Uh, well, go ahead, Suzanne. I, I don't know the difference from five years ago. So, I mean, it's not something that I would know right now. It's something I could follow up with and find out. Do you have any idea what the what a round number is for next year that, that, that we as a supervisory district will have to put into the pension system? Well, before, um, I don't know that we have that off the top of our head. Um, I would say, though, to that question, um, yes, there are changes in the amount of contribution districts make to pension and retirement. That's not the biggest driver of our increases this year. Our biggest increases this year are related to um, inflation, the cost of living, um, a high percentage of our, actually more than a high percentage, most of our budget is supporting people. So salaries, benefits collectively, when they go up at a higher rate than we are used to, and they have. Um, the second impact is we've also had declining revenue. So we've, uh, we are receiving special education funding in a different way this year because of a law passed a number of years ago. So that has gone down. Um, to your point, we have fewer students, so there's revenue decreases in that. Um, those are the biggest cost drivers of this increase. So yes, um, I'm sure that if we looked up the numbers around um, pension and benefits that that contributes, but the, we were, I would add to your description, which I think is accurate, it, it's a bit of a perfect storm. We have um, high costs, less enrollment, and less revenue, and those things together um, resulted in the budget that we have. And I think in terms of the next few years, I don't anticipate, although inflation likely will go down, which will be good, um, I don't anticipate that our realities will change significantly in the next couple of budget cycles. So the hope is as we try to figure out how to make difficult decisions, we want to ground that, as Floor said, in what do we all and by we, I really mean our communities, um, what do we want for our students? So that when we come back to make difficult decisions, because I think the short answer to the comment and question is, um, I think the board recognizes that we're in a place that isn't sustainable and we have to figure that out, but we wanna ground that in what's best for our students and, and really lean on voices is in our community that maybe we don't hear all the time in order to figure out what that is. Thank you. Thank you, Han. Yes, Mrs. Ganewa. Um, with the um, expected loss of revenue next year, how much revenue will we will U32 lose when the students are at the career center all day. Um, I'm just assuming that money will follow them to the career center. And how many students from U32 go to the career center? Thank you. We, we, we have quite a few students that go to the career center, but the money is the same. You know, the tuition is the same. It's, it's, we're not because they're going to be there. Uh, all day it doesn't mean that we're going to pay more it's the same amount i just had a rent of me it's about eight thousand dollars that it's five hundred yeah, but that doesn't mean that shouldn't be a, a, a driver or a discouragement i don't i don't want kids or parents to feel different about it it's, it's a path to a, finishing a high school is is one of the options that our, our, our students have it's a really meaningful way for our students to finish a uh, high school and for all of our students to be involved. So that that is not a, that won't be a driver of us having less revenue if we have more kids go. And this year we have on the report here, I believe we have I don't know. I, I will I will tell you in a in a minute. But uh, I just I just wanted to follow up. I wasn't saying it was a negative. I'm just I was just curious what how that money following not following works and i understand about uh tech schools um, and the career center 
I'm just wondering how many students go there and um, I'm not saying it was a negative thing. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't mean to say that you're saying that I just didn't want people to get confused into that if we will lose revenue if they so we, we do send eight thousand dollars to the career center per, per student that is part we have allocated that in our budget already. So I don't know how to explain that better. So it's not like a loss of revenue, it's definitely some revenue that we invest in the career center. Right. And and I think that the key to your question is that um there is no the, the change of their structure is not a driver, is not one of the significant drivers of the increases. Um, we do have some projected, some additional projected revenue decline next year with the loss of our ARP ESSER money. So that's the last of the COVID relief dollars that we have. Um, so that would be, that's a reduction in revenue next year that will exist regardless. And I just realized Jonas's yeah, hand is up, so he might have a better answer than I. Uh, so it's it's not a question, more more of a, a clarification. It's tr our students that go to the career center still count as equalized pupils. They still yeah. count as as people. So we do get that revenue. So it's not like when they go to the career center, we have to send money, and we also don't get you know we don't get credit from that. So yeah. wanted to make that clear. Thanks, Jonas. Thank you, Jonas. And I, Ms. Kenny, I'll get you the numbers. I have the enrollment for. I'll give you the numbers in a, in a few minutes. Any other questions? Matt, your hand was up before, but I don't know. Can our guest here with us today? <laughs> Can we not run? Yeah, maybe we should run the presentation. Would it be helpful to run the presentation, hey, Jonas? Yeah, yeah. Before we, I just I wanted to clarify uh, a couple of things. You know, I think that you know it, it's absolutely true that the language we use is important, and we need to be very specific and accurate with what we say. Um, today on Front Porch Forum, there was a very well-intentioned post. Uh, saying, you know, asking people to support the budget and saying that it was a level funded budget. Um, and I, I appreciate that sentiment, but it's, it's important to note that it is a level service budget, right? We're spending more money because things cost more, but we're not adding services or taking services away. Um, and I wanted to make sure that everyone knew the difference between, you know, level funded and level service. Uh, I also want it, I think it's important when we're talking about taxes, that tax rates are not going up at the same rate that our spending is, right? So the budget and the amount that we need to raise from taxes is what, 12 something percent, um, but tax rates are not going up 13%, uh, as someone said earlier, and I think it's important to note that as well. Um, and I, I wanted to chime in a, a little bit from, from my perspective to, to talk about where, where we are and what, you know, what this moment is and what we need to think about and what we need to plan for moving forward. And I think it's instructive to look back at our budget process uh, and, you know, speaking to, to Alan's questions, you know, about, you know, where we are and what, what, what the board sees. What we heard from the superintendent and the administration was that we couldn't achieve a level service budget and we couldn't achieve the budget level that the board asked for without a change in the structure of the district. And to me, to, to Alan, for, to speak for myself, I think that means where kids are going to school and where the adults that are providing service to, services to them are working. I think that's the core of the question that we need, the questions that we need to get through in the next year in that planning process, um, which I think everyone here is is looking forward to doing in in good faith and engaging the community. Um, so, we, you know, Alan, we certainly don't see that as as sustainable. Um, you know, that kind of increase, but we are in an extraordinary moment right now. Uh, the board felt that it was important to maintain the services that we had, even though that means, you know, an increase in the money that we need to raise for taxes with the understanding that everyone involved, right? Everyone who has come to these school board meetings over the last few months, 
uh, as we've been talking about the budget and talking about you know the services that we provide, everyone needs to, to, to participate in that. We need to get as many voices as possible. Um, so I'm glad to see some some folks coming to this meeting who uh, uh, who we haven't seen before. It's great to see more people uh, people joining, and it's going to be a long process. Um, you know, this is this is this is what people were you know this is a lot of what people were talking about with Act 46, right? What happens to the schools, right? Are you going to close schools? You know, um, these are the conversations we finally need to have, um, and I think that this board is in a really good place to do that. And I think the budget that, that the budget that we're putting forward that I hope people will support um, gets us to a place where we can have those conversations from a position of strength rather than a position of weakness. Matt, go ahead. So I noticed during the budget planning process, there were other budgets with lower rates of increase. And I was just wondering why the board ended up, I mean, I think they looked at a 6% and then a 7% and we kind of ended up at a 10% raise. I was just, you know, uh, I just wonder why the board went with the, the higher raise because, uh, you know, we do have declining enrollment and we need to start cutting back on some things. Floor, if I may. Oh, sure. You can start. Um, so we we asked for a level service budget first. We saw how much that was going to cost, and it was a it was a number an increase that was you know historically high and far above what I've personally seen since I've been here. We asked for a cut down to six percent. We were told we were told by the administration that that was not possible with the. Um, with the structure of the district and the structure of the schools as it is. We were then presented two options. One included uh, you know, a number of some service cuts, including Spanish program at Romney. Uh, I think some, some para support, um, I think uh, some food service support. I think it ended up being six or seven FTEs that we would cut uh, and some services that we would no longer provide in some schools. We heard a lot from the community. A lot of people came out and told us how important those services were to them, that they would be willing to pay more taxes to, to support that, that these were critical, important things that they wanted the school to provide. We understood that that was going to mean, you know, increasing the budget number and increasing the tax rates. But having heard from the community, a majority of the board voted to support the higher budget with the level services, right? So that we are not, so we're not starting to cut services this year as part of that process that we need to go through to get our pu per pupil spending, you know, where we want it to be um, and to get the tax rates where we hope we can get them. Um, that's what we did. That was the process this year back. That's that's how we landed at, at this number. That was a long, long process. And we heard from a lot more people about this budget than we've heard about any budget I've been part of before. And they were nearly unanimous. Any other board members? Oops, oops. Hey, I don't particularly doing the same thing. Maggie? I just want to add to, to Jonas's synopsis that we also heard a real desire to be engaged in any, um, the community to be engaged in any restructuring, revisioning of what our schools look like, um, which felt very valid. And additionally, Oops. 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 She can cut and her internet's not always the most stable. Maggie? She really has her camera off. Yeah. Maggie, you want to turn off your camera and maybe? There were several. Maggie, why don't you turn your camera off because we can't really hear you. Right, we went through. She can't hear you. Oh, she I can hear you, but you can't hear me, huh? Yeah. Now, now we can, but maybe, yeah, and you're kind of Breaking. frozen. Yeah, yep. Yeah. It's coming. The internet's coming next year. 
Um, so the other thing, um, I don't know where I got, I left off being heard, but um, what we heard from the community was if there is going to be fundamental restructuring of what our schools look like, we want to be involved. And you can look, at, I mean, we have beautiful presentations from the prior meetings on the, um, the process, the different budgets and, and the comparisons of, of reductions, frankly, which also included nursing and library services in some of the schools in addition to the services that Jonas spoke to um, and a you know, significant shift in pre-K location for, uh, for Worcester. So um, uh, it, it's really an invitation for people to come out so that we can be fiscally responsible going forward also with an understanding that this year it was just it would have been an, an incredible shift to make the changes that that were recommended but it has people paying attention now and that's what we really need we need people to be involved because it can't look like this going forward and i think we all as a board understand that and are, are ready for that work i know we are Mecca, are you still with? Oh, yeah, I just lost you. Any other comments from board members? I think I think most important, Mac. I think we we uh, as a board as a whole, we agree that this board will serve our kids, uh, and that we are all like really ready to get uh, into the year round budgeting process again. And we and we know that this didn't end that day, right? Like we, you know, we're. Hoping for uh, you know to hear the results from the budget, uh, you know tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow night, and we will be jumping into a finance meeting to write the next week and continuing this conversation. So we realize that we can't be doing budgeting just you know for a period of time right before the the, the the town meeting, right? And even though we started back in October and we had a really, we need to be thinking about the budget year round so that. And uh, realize the opportunities that we have as a district together, and hopefully, uh, the economics are going to be better next year. And you know, we're going to be facing some challenges, but we are ready to, to to work together. I think that's important right there. Yeah. The challenges and level service. How we do that, I don't know, because yeah. with the declining enrollment and the costs, I think. It was great people came out. Now we have to look forward to how can we continue to educate in the best way possible without the too much increases um, and our per pupil spending, looking at it quite carefully. Yeah, and, and with the strategic planning and being able to hire this consultant right now to work with us, we, we have to make sure that we are able to have everybody at the table, right? Mm -hmm. To make sure that everybody's voice is represented and you know like we were saying there's certain things like we're going to start in the negative next year right so part of the reason to start early too is that we know that we're losing our 500 you know half a million dollars of SR funds right just there we're starting uh, under but we are also realizing that we have never had this ability as as a district to realize all the opportunities that we have together so you know, it's challenging, but it's super exciting. And, and I think we have uh, a lot of opportunities as a district together. And we're working, you know, the three pillars that we have set are achievement and student outcomes, student and healthy and safety school, schools, and human justice and equity. To keep all of those pillars and know that our administrators are working towards that, our, you know, the reports that we're receiving from them are towards that. We're doing great work in our AM quality committee to, to make sure that we stay on top of monitoring and what is best for kids and you know in, invest in things that we think are worth for 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 our kids. And so I'm 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 excited. I think board members are excited. We are intimidated obviously you know it would be you know it wouldn't be not real if you didn't say oh my God you know it is going to be hard but I think you have a board that is committed and an administration and our superintendent that are committed to doing what is right for, for kids and for our community. So I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work, and we need you guys to be at the table, right? We need more community members, and please go and vote tomorrow and 
And we're happy. I, I was thinking that maybe we could share the slide. I think it's 14 that shows those budget realities and then the, the other slide that shows the other. Pillars, or yeah, we could start with those. You know, the three pillars that we we're talking about are uh, right here. Okay, oh, I didn't realize I might not be sharing. Oh, oh yeah, I, yeah, it's not sure, but sorry. Can you see it now? No, nope. oh no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I just went it. too quickly. We could see it. <laughs> <laughs> there. Okay, so there you go. It's coming. But it's loading in my computer, but my computer is low, so it's maybe there loading go. yourself. Oh, there it is. Okay. So those were the three pillars that we were just talking about, or areas of focus that we have been doing and that we are continuing to do academic achievement. And in, uh, oops, we just lost it. Sorry. No, I just went too fast. Oh, shit. Sure. Okay. that faster. No. There we go. There we go. It's safe and healthy schools and our humanity and justice, uh, humanity and justice work. And under that, you can see I'm not going to read all of that, but you can see uh, some examples of what those areas are working on. In. And then if we could move to the next slide and you can see the, what we were talking about, the realities of our budget for the question that you asked, uh, Alan. So those were our realities, the inflation and economic reality, decline in enrollment, instructional plan funding changes is what Megan was talking about, and how we receive funding. And the sunset of our SM funds and the SM funds is what we've been getting federally right now through the, you know, some people call them pandemic funds, but you know, those are SM funds. And the workforce, the challenges that we have faced this year, that's all part of the inflation. And the, yeah, and the budget, you know, this is another great slide. Of the, you know, the, the budget definitely has education quality, evidence based practices, is what we were just talking about. Like, how do we do that as a, as a, as a district is what we've been working since we, you know, forever as individual schools, but as a district now, we have even greater uh, opportunities. And the budget represents our student needs and uh, equitable distribution of resources as well. We're working towards in all our in all our schools, and that's the enrollment reality, which is great. So get more people to move, but as many people say, we don't have enough houses, anyways. But yeah, we you know, we need more kids, so we need more kids in our district. And, and if you step back, I don't know about other towns, but in East Montpelier's, the death rate is way higher than, than the birth rate. Yes. Um, yeah. And it was very, very clear this yeah. year, especially. It seemed, I don't know. They're yeah. just. Sure. And it's not just Vermont, you know, it's the main, it's all of the New England states and some of the rural states in the US are facing the exact same, you know, and especially Vermont and, and Maine, you know, are. Most growing population besides homelessness is uh, 65 year olds. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I would add to, um, and this is related to the question about enrollment. Um, part of the reason we've shown three years back and three years forward is because after three years forward, well, for two reasons. One, to show that these declines have held. Our predictions over time of the decline, they're coming true. Um, which is important information. Um, but also, after three years, we do level out somewhat. At least our predictions would have us level out. And that's also important because the structure that we build for that time should be the right structure for um, for at least some amount of the future. So, and I wonder, Florence, do you, should we go to the slide that shows the tax impact? Sure. To mm -hmm. this yeah. point about yeah. the difference between yeah. We talked about that. And I'll even skip this. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, but this, I think this slide and the next one might be helpful. The next one is um, impact on house. Yeah. So we can do, so if you're in the king, it, So you can see here, uh, 
Yeah. Okay. So the uh, the local education spending for equalized people is twenty. As you know from the previous slide, just because that's not uh, right here, you can see that the local spending is twenty three thousand and twenty two dollars. Uh, they compare this amount with the fifteen thousand four hundred seventy nine for fifteen thousand four hundred seventy nine property yield gives us an equalized tax of a thousand four hundred uh, sorry one point forty eight seventy three. This table exhibits the tax rates calculated across the district for this budget. The tax rate still increases in each town, but the increases range from, as you can see there, from 11 cents to 5 cents in, um, in Worcester. And then this shows what that looks like. Yeah, based on house value. Yeah, and, that, and that's the other thing that, uh, that hit us too, the CLA. The CLA, how houses are being sold right now in our towns are, are being sold higher. We haven't had a reappraiser. We are all, all our towns actually are done, are due for a reappraiser. Yeah, and that was part of that, that graph. So that, the CLA also didn't help us. But here you can see the tax rate for a house valued at $1,000, $100,000 to $200,000 and $300,000. You can see those labels up there. So using uh, our proposed budget to protect the increase, you can see the increase on Berlin there at 100, for example, is 116, and in Worcester is 50. If you house the value at 300, I'm gonna jump all the way there, you can see the increases for, for town. So for, you know, have several East Montana folks here, so you can see that as $269, uh, while in Worcester is 150. So, Floor, I don't think we have the slide in this packet that had that shows the difference between the two budgets that we looked at, the one that had the service cuts for nursing and food service and Spanish, and the one that uh, that's warned uh, for tomorrow. Yeah, I don't have it. I don't think we have that slide, but I think it's important to to you know, to, 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 to to the the questions that people have asked, the difference between the two budgets that we saw at the two final budgets that we saw, the one that's being voted on tomorrow and the one that had all the service cuts, the difference in tax rates was between those two budgets was $35 per 100,000 of value, all right? So as we're thinking about, you know, you know what we were gonna spend and what we, what we wanted to ask the community to pay for, that was the difference, $35 per $100,000 in home value, the difference between lots of service cuts that people didn't want and the budget that we're at now. Any any other questions? Okay. Kind of helpful for folks to at least have those. I think those are sort of the most important slides, sort of around what we've been talking about there today. Yeah. And I don't need to repeat that you know, we're entering a difficult time, but all the opportunities are here and we're here to work together. Oh, Maggie. Just to Jonas's point, that information is all available on our website in the packets from the prior meetings. Um, so I don't know about, I can share that link in the, the chat. Um, one is a in video form from the February meeting, but I think our, our one of our January meetings has that the three the three or four budgets, right? Because we, we went through four to four B, correct? At the end, yeah. we had four A and four B, so we went many iterations of a, a budget during this planning process. I'm happy to to find that and connect it if community members would be interested in in seeing that visually. Um, and I also just want to thank administration again, because we put them through all of this and they were always prepared at our next meeting to present us with what we were asking for a great deal of work for central office um, and administration for that matter principals were, you know, heavily involved, as I recall, in having conversations with Megan about what revisioning what our schools might look like if we were a taking a creative approach to this in order to meet needs. Thank you, Maggie. And then one last quick comment I put in the chat, the central room monitor, central report too, 
it remember to ask for that ballot too mm -hmm. when you go to vote tomorrow you haven't voted on that ballot that would be that'd be great and page 10 mr Naylor, is the enrollment and we have have 47 students right now year 32 the first instance and with that i think we will conclude our annual our annual meeting thank you board members for being here thank you megan and suzanne for being here and alicia is also here we as maggie was saying we do have a pretty incredible leadership team and administrators and and staff so i hope that you can all remember to go and vote tomorrow if you haven't already. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, board members, for being here too. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>